Hello, uh, welcome back to the course on audio signal processing uh, for music applications. In this demonstration class, I want to go over free sound uh, but present some advanced features. Uh, we already uh, talked about free sound and uh, hopefully uh, many of you have uh, used it and have uh, enjoyed the, the great number of sounds uh, that uh, are there. But now I want to uh, describe some more advanced features that are going to be quite useful for some of the things that you will have to do this, uh, this week. Uh, so let's uh, go to free sound. And uh, well, uh, I guess uh, you all know what it is. It's basically a community of people that uh, are uploading and sharing sounds. Uh, there is a lot of people that uh, benefit from it, uh, but uh, of course what is uh, more valuable for free sound are all the sounds and all the people that are contributing with information uh, about uh, the sounds they upload. And uh, that's what I want to focus on now is how to find all that information that users uh, have been uploading and have been uh, contributing with uh, all these sounds and all these uh, descriptions. So first, uh, let me go to the sounds uh, page. And in here, basically, we see uh, the recent sounds and we see different ways of uh, uh, looking for sounds. Uh, traditionally, the normal way of searching from for sounds is the, just the search and type uh, some uh, name of a sound and then hopefully it will be found through there. But apart from that, uh, there is other ways of uh, browsing through sounds. Uh, let's look at this area. These are uh, different ways to browse uh, of uh, some data that users have, uh, have uh, uploaded. So for example, let's start with the tags. So with every sound, the users are requested to uh, specify some uh, tags that uh, are meaningful for describing uh, the, the sound. And these are the most common tags that people have been uploading. Okay. And uh, we can start searching uh, sounds through this uh, tag cloud. So for example, a very common uh, tag would be this uh, multi-sample. Okay. So let's click at that. This is a tag that many people use to refer to uh, collections of samples of sounds that, uh, that people upload. So it's uh, samples of a musical instrument, for example. Okay, so here we see a whole bunch of samples, um, and uh, there is uh, 12,000 uh, samples. But let's say I want to uh, restrict more and find some specific musical instruments. So for example, okay, there is this string instrument label or tag, and if we click at the plus sign, then we are adding these two tags. So we are adding the multi-sample plus the string instrument. And every time I do that, the, the tags, the tag cloud changes. So now, for example, it's showing all the tags that are found together with multi-sample and string instrument. And the size of the, of the text refers to uh, the, how much, how many of those uh, uh, labels uh, are actually used. So now with the multi-sample and a string instrument, well, we see uh, that uh, resulting sounds are from violin or, let's see, of uh, viola or double bass or violoncello. So these are string instrument samples. So that's a pretty good way to uh, search uh, specific types of sound and narrow down the result to something that uh, makes uh, makes sense. So let's go back to the sounds. So now let's uh, search uh, through another type of information like uh, the geotags. So we can browse a geotags. This is a type of tag that uh, not uh, all the sounds have. This is a type of tag that makes sense when a sound has been recorded in a particular geographical area and that uh, makes sense to reflect that particular uh, location. So here now we see uh, a map of the world and uh, we have a cluster all the sounds for every particular area of the world 
and we see how many sounds there are in, uh, in those areas. So we can uh, see that some areas have uh, much uh, fewer sounds than some others. So let's look at the one that has the most number of sounds. It's, it's here in the middle. It has uh, 4,700 sounds. So if we zoom in here, okay, now we go to this area that uh, we had. Okay, so uh, now we, the, the, the clustering is, uh, is more fine-tuned. So we see that the, this area that has a lot of sounds is uh, the area that, not, not surprisingly, is uh, the area around Barcelona. So since uh, we have been uh, developing these and, uh, and uh, promoting it, uh, so many people in our uh, area are, uh, are uploading sounds to Freesound. So that's good. So in fact, if we zoom even more, Okay, we are going to zoom into the, the area of the city of Barcelona. And still there is a lot of sounds, right? Uh, so the city is all this whole area, but if we zoom even more, okay, uh, now we will see all the sounds, the individual sounds that uh, are actually uh, identified. Okay, so this is the, all the individual sounds. And, uh, okay, there is an area that is very crowded. So, in fact, if we zoom into that area even more, okay, let's... Okay, this area, well, again, uh, not surprisingly, this is the area where our campus is. So, that means that uh, all our students uh, are uh, really contributing and uh, adding uh, a geotag with uh, the location of our campus. Okay, let's uh, again uh, go back to the sounds. Now let's uh, use the standard search uh, menu, uh, let's search option, and let's just uh, do an empty search. So let's just uh, click uh, return, uh, carriage return here and it will show basically all the sounds that uh, are uh, right now in free sound and this is the total number of sounds that are there so 224,000 sounds so that's pretty good we can find uh, sounds from uh, practically everything and apart from that it's also interesting to see the distribution of uh, uh, some of the characteristics of these sounds so for example we see the licenses that uh, people have been using to upload sounds there is the option of three type of licenses right now attribution and that's the most popular one and that means that you're free to do anything you want with uh, with the sounds here but you have to give attribution to uh, the owner of the sound uh, another uh, not so popular uh, is the attribution non-commercial so that means that uh, you cannot use it for commercial applications and finally the creative commons uh, zero which is basically public domain you can do anything no need to uh, attribute anything and finally there is this sampling plus that now it's not used but this is a legacy uh, license from some time ago uh, that uh, this license existed in uh, creative commons and we used it but also we can find uh, like the distribution of of tags uh, this tag cloud we can find the the distribution of uh, file formats sampling rates uh, so that's a quite interesting way to or to look at the whole collection of free sound okay now let's look for a particular sound uh, for example let's look for clarinet uh, Okay, it's right here, so let's uh, search for that. So this will return the sounds that either in the title of the, the name of the file or the description or of the tags, it has the word clarinet. So like uh, this first one, it has it in uh, the three places, in the title, the description and the tags. So that's why it uh, came up. As, as kind of the first in this order list okay and uh, that's uh, 900 and something sounds but I want to uh, look for a for a note of a clarinet and this uh, first is uh, has some phrases uh, so let's uh, do advanced uh, search and for example well to, to make sure that it's a short a single note one so for example let's just put 
that uh, we just look for sounds that have a duration from 0 to 5. Okay, and now it will search for just within that for all the sounds that are only uh, a maximum of 5 seconds long. And this is uh, what we obtained. So this is a little bit better, but still there is loops and things that m that's not what I wanted. So in fact, let's look at the tags and we can add to that some further filters to narrow down the search. So for example, let's just look for single notes. This is a good uh, tag here that should restrict to single notes. Maybe first let's uh, take this out so that we see the list of all the sounds and let's click here. Okay, and it, uh, in, it got an, uh, 255 sounds, and these are yeah, single notes of uh, the clarinet sound. And uh, we can play any of them. Okay, so this is a very high pitch sound. Then another way, once we have found a set of sounds that we might be interested in, uh, it's uh, good to uh, use this option that is finding similar sounds. And this is the aspect that relates more to the kind of things we're doing in class and that we will be doing e also in, uh, in this week. So if we click uh, find similar sounds, it will look through the, the whole collection of uh, free sound, not just the ones that are named uh, clarinet. It will look through all of that uh, for sound that have the same timbre quality. Okay, so this was our query sound and uh, well, not surprise again, the resulting sounds are also clarinet sounds because from the timbre is uh, the most related one. But to understand that, I want to go to the demonstration, uh, the, well, the place where the developer information is. Let's click here. So this is uh, the page for the developer uh, that uh, wants to use the FreeSound API. Uh, we'll talk about that in the programming uh, lecture, um, but uh, basically through the API we can uh, use a software to access all the sounds and all the information and all the descriptors that have been analyzed for the sound. So in here we have the documentation and we can go to the analysis documentation where all these uh, analysis descriptors are listed. So these are the features that have been analyzed from the sound, from all the sounds of free sound using Essentia, this library that again we'll be presenting in, a, in, the, in the programming uh, lecture. And uh, well, these are all the features that uh, are part of the identification or characterization of the sounds and from which then this similarity measure is established. So uh, every of these uh, um, features uh, have several values that describe uh, this uh, sound and then we can measure the distance between every uh, two sounds from uh, this data. Okay. For example, if we go to uh, some of them in particular, we can see uh, how the information uh, looks like. Well, the information is in the Sentia uh, in the Sentia website where the information about how this feature has been computed. Here what uh, we see is in fact how to actually through the API access uh, this information, the detail of it, and the actual uh, details of what has been computed. So uh, what we have access is not every single MFCC coefficient for the whole duration of the sound, but uh, to the statistics of this uh, feature for the whole duration of the sound. So here we see the minimum and the maximum uh, variance, etc. And here uh, we see an histogram of the distribution of values for one of these particular coefficients, the coefficient uh, zero, for the whole collection of sounds in free sound. So basically that means that uh, the, all the sounds are quite well distributed in terms of this coefficient around a certain value. If we look at other uh, coefficients, they are more symmetric, uh, so the distribution is more Gaussian, so uh, they are better uh, distributed. Okay. So anyway, so through these descriptors, 
now uh, we can understand a little bit better what this similarity does. So let's go back to the main uh, sound page. Okay, and now uh, let's search uh, for, the, for another sound. Let's, uh, for example, search for the sound of rain. This uh, will return the sounds that have in their name the word rain, either in the title or in the description or tags, and ordered by the, in the, so in this first one, rain is in the three places, so it's rank uh, first. Um, this uh, first sound is uh, this sound. Okay, so it's a heavy rain. Now, if we search for similar sounds based on this similarity, on, uh, on comparing all these features of the sound and finding the closest ones, uh, okay, it, uh, the query sound was uh, the one we just heard, and the first uh, return sound is also the sound of rain. It's very similar. But what is interesting is that the third closest sound is not the sound of rain. In fact, the name rain is not in the title, nor in the description, nor in the uh, tags. It's the sound of waterfalls. Let's listen to that. Okay, so this uh, is sound from a waterfall, but uh, it sounds very similar to the sound of rain. So this is why, through this content description, independently of the, the tags or the textual information, we have been able to find these relationships. This uh, uh, sound, by the way, uh, has a geotag, so the, this is the label of the geotag, so in fact if we click there, it will show the map where it got it from or where it was recorded. The user specified the recording location and I guess yeah, this is the Bahamas, uh, so yeah, this is uh, Florida and uh, this is uh, definitely the Bahamas. Okay, uh, now let's go back to uh, here. This is uh, my home page basically where all the sounds I have been uploading are gathered. And I want to talk about uh, something that uh, I have been specifying for some of the sounds I've been uploading. Okay, so for example, let's look at this uh, sound of the speech mail residual that uh, I uploaded as an example of the harmonic plus residual analysis. Let's listen to it. Okay, this sound is a sound that I obtained analyzing the speech mail sound. So what I did was to specify this relationship. And this is captured by this icon, so the remixes uh, relationships. This is the remix tree. Okay, so the sound that uh, uh, I click was this speech mail sound. And what here it tells me is that this sound is, uh, uh, is related to the speech mail sound. That basically the source of the, our sound is the speech mail sound. And I also specify all these other sounds that I, uh, I generated uh, and I specify that they come from this speech mail sound. But in fact, this speech mail sound is also not uh, an original sound. It's a sound that I obtain from another sound in FreeSound, from another user, who uh, has been uploading great sounds, and I just cut a section of it, I converted it to mono so that it could be useful for the class. But I made explicit this relationship. Okay? And this is very good, because this is a way to keep track of all these uh, relationships. And that's uh, all I wanted to, to say, uh, basically, uh, we went uh, through some advanced features. Hopefully, you became motivated to use FreeSound and especially to contribute to FreeSound. FreeSound is as valuable as the community around it is, uh, is and therefore uh, uh, their contributions and how valuable are their effort in contributing to that. Um, so let's go back to uh, here and well, we went over FreeSound and uh, we uh, looked at this uh, documentation from the API that we will uh, look more carefully in the, in the next uh, programming uh, class that 
explains how these features of the sound were analyzed and uh, therefore uh, allows us to understand better some of the features of the similarity search in free sound. And that's all. Uh, we went over uh, some advanced features of free sound. Uh, there is much more that we could talk about, but hopefully with that uh, you have enough information to understand some of the things that you will need, especially in the assignment of uh, this week. And uh, hopefully uh, this uh, has been uh, useful for you. So thank you very much and I see you uh, next class.